Hi, I'm Jason Tanner. I'm a welding instructor at MSU Northern. Today we're going to go over how to repair the end of a hydraulic cylinder for our repair and maintenance class. And what the problem is, is on these snap ring grooves right in here, it's really thin. So if you measure the OD of this tube and then the ID of that snap ring groove, you only have 50 thousandths of material on a side. So what happens is if they hit something solid in the ground or a big rock that gets pressure behind that head and it pushes that head pressure and snaps that groove off and so this whole head breaks off. So we're going to machine a head that is thicker that goes over here and recreates the snap ring groove right in here. And then what we'll do is we'll take measurements from here inside of that snap ring groove the measurement of the ID snap ring groove, the measurement of the OD tube, and the ID measurement of the tube. On this tube, you'll notice there's a counterboard right in here, and it measures three inches, 25 thousandths. And on the head, you'll also see that it is a step right there. So it cannot go back in further inside the tube. So when we stick this in here, and we push it in, it stops right at the edge of that snap ring groove. Okay, so when that snap ring is in there, it holds everything in place. And what happens, like I said, is it busts out when you get all that pressure behind there. So we're gonna go over the steps on what you need to do to make the head and weld it on to repair this groove. Now we're going to go over how to take the measurements so you can machine the groove. Um, I have them all wrote down here. So we're going to go over how I came up with these measurements. Okay, so if you look at the ID here, it shows 3 inches, 15 thousandths. That's what this measurement is right here. If you measure it, it's right around 3 inches 15 thousandths, but it is out around a little bit and it can go to 318 all the way to 320. Okay, so and it's aluminum and there's a little bit of scuff marks on there. And if you measure the tube, it is actually bigger because it needs to slide in there. And they have it 3 inches 34 thousandths. Okay, that's too much for me. I don't like that much slop on my head. So I made a, I made a happy medium when I machine mine. I'm going to make it 3 inches 25 thousandths. So I'm going to give myself 10 thousandths clearance. Okay, so that's my first measurement. My next measurement is my snap ring groove. And that's 3 inches 275 thousandths. And what I do is I take my snap ring and I measure it and I want to give it 25 thousandths of press that way it stays nice and tight in the snap ring groove. This is what I prefer, this is what I've done and it works very well. That's the measurement of the snap ring groove. So you can see this is the bore of the head, this is going to be our snap ring groove and this bore here is going to be the OD of our tube right here. So if we measure the tube, 3 inches 379 thousandths, measures 80 there, three eighty there. So this tube is just a little bit bigger. My calipers could be off just a little bit too. I measured it with a micrometer this morning and that's what I came up with. But I also give it a little clearance so my head will slide over this when we put it on. So I will probably give it two to three thousandths clearance. I don't want it loose on this head because this is going to help keep me straight once I cut this off. So I have my diameters that I need to bore the inside and the outside I'm going to make three inches 625 thousandths. Now how I came up with that is I doubled the thickness of this snap ring groove diameter. So right now on this snap ring groove diameter, there's only 50 thousandths of material on a side. And if you do the math from the three inches 379 to the three inches 
25 thousandths, I roughly have 100 thousandths on a side. So it makes that groove twice as strong. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out our depths. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can install the snap ring groove and then come off the edge and take a depth measurement to the snap ring groove. That is not really accurate unless you measure the snap ring groove and do the math. So what I like to do is I kind of get really close to where I'm at. and that's roughly a quarter inch. Okay, I like to make it a little longer, so I'm gonna make it 0.29. That gives me just a little bit more space there. So I marked my first measurement 0.29. And you can also go in with a smaller pair of calipers and actually get a really close measurement. So this says 280 thousandths, okay? Made it just a little bit bigger. So that's, that's to our first counterboard, okay? Now we have to have our snap ring group. Our snap ring measures 96 thousandths, 97 thousandths. So I'm going to make my groove 125,000 so it's not going in there tight. We need a little bit of room in there so it goes in nice and it snaps in place. So I have another measurement of 125,000 there. The overall length of my piece is going to be one inch. So if I take the 0 .29 and the 125, and I subtract those from the one inch, I come up with 0.71. So from this face to here is 710 thousandths. And then I take a measurement from here to here, adding the 0.29 in the eighth inch, and that I come up with 585 thousandths from this edge to that edge. And that gives me my depths. So when I set my zero on my lathe, I know how far to cut in to each counterboard. This counterbore is already done. It's a through counterbore. So all I have to do is that one and that one. Okay, let's go over the setup on the lathe. Now, I have my piece on here. I clamp it up, get it nice and straight. I indicate this face in with a dial indicator. Make sure it runs perfectly true. I put my boring bar in and I set my height. Your boring bar needs to be just a little bit above center when you're turning on the inside. And when you're turning the OD, your cutting tool just needs to be a little bit below center. It's different from ID to OD. So we have our new all DRO and we can come over here to our piece and I like to use a piece of paper so you don't chip your tool. I can come up to the face, move my paper back and forth until I hit. And I can set my zero right there. Okay. So now that my zero is set, when I come off, Zero set. I can come off and I know the depth that I can go to. So as I come over here and I come back and turn, my first measurement was 710,000. So as I go in and turn it, I come in and you can watch your 
read out until it goes to 710 thousandths and then you stop. And you back off and you measure the inside until you get to the diameter you want. And then you come back and then we'll counterbore it to that 585 thousandths. And once that's all done, everything on the inside is ready to go. We've created our snap ring groove right here the inner bore of our tube and then the outer bore of our tube. This is going to create everything that we're cutting off. Once that's all done, I change the holes. I can come over here and then turn the OD to the correct diameter I need. And now that we have our part made, we can go start cutting our cylinder apart and preparing it for this head to go on. Now let's go over the setup on the saw. So I have a stand back here supporting my tube, making sure that my tube is straight with the saw, everything's level so it's going to cut straight. Now, earlier, remember our measurement was 280 thousandths. I made my head 290. So we're going to make a mark on here, 280 thousandths, we're going to cut on the other side of that mark so we're not getting into our snap ring group. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark. that I'm on the other side or right next to that groove, that mark. Now we're going to turn our saw on and we're going to feed it nice and slow. finished cutting our tubing and you can see we still have some of the snap ring groove left okay now we can take a grinder and grind that off nice and easy because there's not much left there now we're going to go ahead and take a grinder and we're going to start grinding this outer edge away leaving this bottom edge of the snap ring groove Now I have finished grinding my piece and you can see that I left just a hair line of a snap ring groove there and then I've tapered it back on this edge so when I set my piece on there it should go right down and be set to the right height. So we'll go ahead and set our piece on there. I have a piece of aluminum here so when I tap on here that I don't dent my metal. So as I tap it down I get back and forth from each side to each side. Now it's set tight. And you can look, and that created our snap ring groove. Now, before I tack this on, I want to make sure that my snap ring can go in there. There it is, nice and tight. That fits really well. Now we'll go ahead and put the head in and make sure it fits too.
There it is. Nice and tight. Okay, now we can go ahead and weld our piece in. Okay, now we've come over to our welding table. I have a stand here to help support it. Uh, I got my welder set for the thickness of material I'm using. I have my gas turned on and now I'm going to tack it in opposite sides in four spots. So I'm going to go 180 degrees from each other when I tack it. And that's to help keep it from pulling. So I'm going to do that right now. Now I've tacked it in four spots to make sure that it's not going to pull when I'm welding. So now I'm going to go ahead and weld this side and then weld that side. Now I've finished welding it, I've made sure to tie in my starts and stops so I don't have any leaks. <laughs> Everything is welded 100%. Now we can go over and start honing our cylinder. We need to hone our cylinder after we're done welding it because when you weld around it, it distorts it a little bit. And the heat also makes it so it's just a little bit out around. So we want to make sure and use a rigid style hone. Go inside and hone it out so it's nice and round so our O-rings will seal on the surface and we have no oil that comes through. Let's go ahead and stick our hone in. Adjust it down just a little bit. Okay, this is an adjustable hone, so as you tighten it, the stones move out. And as you loosen it, they go back in. So what I do is I take and I adjust it just hand tight. So I start getting a little drag. There we go. Now I'll hook my drill up and we'll start honing it. Want to make sure and spray plenty of honing oil in there. And one thing you want to make sure is not spin your hone too fast. If you spin it too fast, you'll just destroy your stones. Okay, and then I just start on the right way. And I move it in and out as I'm doing it. Okay, now I can feel less drag on the home. So I can go ahead and tighten it up some more. Spray just a little bit more honing oil in there. And I also have a bucket down here to catch my oil as it runs out. It's starting to look pretty good. You can see where we're cleaning it up, right where the O-ring rides, right here. And it's starting to get nice and shiny. I'm going to take just a little bit more. Say is I'm not clamping on the tube. You want to make sure and not clamp on the tube in your vise because if you do, it can smash your tube a little bit. You won't see it, but you can feel it. And as you hone it, when you clamp on it, you're going to be honing with that pressure on there. And then when you release the pressure, your tube is not round again. Now that we have honed it out, you can see right where this O-ring rides, it's all nice and smooth and round again. And as I was honing it, I was going in and out, making sure not to stay in one spot. And now it's all nice and, and round again.
So now it's complete. You want to make sure that you clean all the oil and grit out of your cylinder. If you don't, it will shorten the, the life of your seals. And if it gets past your filter, it can also destroy your pump. So you want to make sure and get all that cleaned out.